In this video, I'm going to explain how I've drawn my lateral cuffs. Uh, so how I've done the overall, the superimposition for the overall face and also for the maxilla and the mandible. So this is what you'll need to draw them manually. I bought a light pad off Amazon. I think it was about 10, 15 pounds. It's completely flat, so different settings. Um, I also got some tracing paper, which was a pound from a shop. You need your printed lateral cuffs, which I'll explain how to print those later. Mechanical pencil is better than a normal pencil. People recommend using edding pens. Um, I use Muji pens, but the thinnest ones in 0.38 millimeters, black, green, and red, a rubber. Um, to secure it, you can either use tape. I've run out of tape, so here's some Christmas tape. And I've got some bulldog clips, so you can use either. And I've also got a ruler and a protractor. You can get specialised orthodontic protractors. I just happened to get this massive one off, um, off a course that I went on to. But a small one does the same job as well. So when you get the JPEG of your lateral cuff, before you print it out, I would actually recommend going around and outlining all the structures with a little dot. So you can use a uh, paint. I've got Photoshop and all you essentially do is that you click on the pencil button and then you just add dots going around. You'll find that when you print it out and you put it on the light pad, these dots are a lot easier to see than the actual structures themselves. So just to explain some of the structures that I've outlined, it all depends on where you want to do your superimpositions on. In this patient, I have outlined cella, cranial base, and I've also done her BBL structures as well. Um, I've done hard tissue, nasion, orbitale, maxilla, and the mandible with the synthesis. Um, outlined the incisors. Um, here I should have outlined the molars as well, first molars. Um, I've outlined the third molar, the ID canal and the condyle and I've also done the soft tissue structures as well. Once I'm happy with that outline I then import this into Word and so this is the part where you need to make sure that your printout, the physical printout, actually matches up with a ruler. So if I was to get my ruler here and take this ruler it should actually match up, so it should be the same dimensions. In order to make sure you're doing that, I checked on here, so I zoomed in to this ruler here. I also made sure that I've actually got my ruler highlighted as well, so you can see the ruler on the sides. And then I did, zoomed in, I basically looked at point one and two, which is a centimetre. I measured this, so this is about from the 20, 23, it's about, about 3.2 centimetres. I then made sure that a centimetre on here was about 3.2 millimetres. Then I know that when I print this out, it will print out in the correct scale. If not, you need to make sure you go up to the picture Make sure that's clicked so that when you change the height, it will um, it will change the width as well. And you essentially just do little changes, like 1.5, until you get um, the correct width. And then you print it out, and it should come out like that. And just to say as well, yes, it can take you several attempts for you to actually get it right. So buy lots of printer paper. So now... We take your printed lateral kef, we take a sheet of tracing paper, put them together and then stick them on top of your light pad. Make sure that the two sheets are lined up, that helps, and then you can either secure it in with a bulldog clip, because the light pad is so nice and thin, you can actually just hold it in place, or you can use tape as well, it doesn't matter, but I tried to secure into at least two places. When you switch it on now, you can see that now if you've done the dots, it's a lot easier to see your um, to see your outlines. If you don't have the outlines, it can sometimes be quite difficult to pick up what you're trying to draw. And then now you draw them with a pencil. Right, so I've now drawn these out in pencil and it's at this stage you really critique the shape of your incisors and molars. Are you happy with them? If you're happy, great. If not, go back, rub them out and do them again because 
you will duplicate, hopefully duplicate these shapes throughout your tracing. So your um, end tracing and things should have the same shaped molars. You shouldn't have a change in your molars during your superimposition. You should also at this point critique your molar and incisor relationship. I know that this patient is a class 3 so I'm happy with the class 3 incisor relationship. However, my molars, they should be class 1 um, and he looks slightly quarter 2. So I know that's wrong. I need to sort that out now because otherwise any mistakes now will just be replicated further down the line. So I'm going to change that now. So if you are happy with your teeth, you then take another sheet of tracing paper and trace those out with a bit of a gap between them. So these are the teeth that you're going to be using. So keep that to one side. So now that you have your outline, you now take another sheet of tracing paper on top of that. And we're now going to draw out your angles. So doing S and A, S and B and all the facial heights and things. So now that I've drawn out all my lines, I've also written down all my values on the side here. So I have done S and A, S and B, worked out A and B. He's one, which I know that he is Mars Gleetal three. I do the Eastman analysis on him as well. I've done my wits where I've got my occlusal pane, found the tangent to of A point, tangent of B point. He is class, he is Mars three. Because the distance, now that I know that this distance on my ruler is correct in real life, if I take my actual ruler, we'll measure from A, there, it's about four millimeters. He's minus four widths. Um, with my um, SN, ANSP, and S angle, it's quite difficult to try and measure this line with SN. So, what I've done is that I've basically taken this line. And moved it upwards so I got my protractor and I took 90 degrees so that is 90 degrees going up and I measured some arbitrary value so here I took four and then on this side I did exactly the same four so I've got the same distance drew a line and then that is my um, <clears throat> SN maxillary plane angle that worked out to be six so that's within norms um, and then i did mm pa which is there what else they did lower facial height so i took my maxillary plane measured uh, 90 degrees measured the distance here measured the distance there to get and then did the percentage for lower facial height um up in sizes i've done Low incisors, so up incisors to maxillary plane, low incisors to mandibular plane. Um, I've done my intincisal angle, and then here I've also done my nasolabial angle, and I've done uh, Ricketts E line. You can also do low incisor to uh, a pagonium as well. At this point, I look at all these values and make sure do these make sense to me. So is he kind of like a mild skeletal three, skeletal one? Yes, that's what I know. Wits, I think he's also slightly class three because the incisors are class three. Things like his lower facial height, that's kind of almost within, slightly increased, but within normal values. His up incisors, did they look not, um normal clinically low incisors were a little bit pro -clines. you always have to look at these values and make sure they match up with your clinical picture before you proceed so if you're now happy with your initial drawing you're happy with the measurements and you're all good you can now copy this out into black so you've got your you can get rid of your kef now you don't need that anymore you just now need the tracing paper and then a blank sheet of paper on top. And now you're going to outline all of this in black. Um, this is where it's really tricky to make sure that when you do the lines, you try and have a continuous line. So you're not kind of drawing, doing a line, stopping, and then continuing on, because you can get little dots. So it's all about making sure that if you do, I try to do light strokes. And then when you try and continue on, <laughs> that's not a very good one but can you see it's always try and have continuous um, lines if possible if you're going to stop somewhere stop somewhere on a point as opposed to one like or 
or on a straight line as opposed to going around in a curve. The good thing about a light pad is that you can, as you're going around, you can move the light pad in the direction of your hand. So it's just a lot easier than you trying to turn your body. You can actually just turn the light pad around as you're doing the outline. So good luck with that. So now you've got your completed outline, you now need to duplicate this by either redrawing it or finding a photocopier and printing out an extra copy. So we've now got two copies, it's probably best to have more than one copy, but that's the minimum that you need. And then also having the maxilla and the mandible also drawn out individually as well. And then you essentially do all of this and replicate it with your other lateral cuffs. So now we're going to do exactly the same, but now with your near end kef. So I've got my near end kef with the braces on, sheet of tracing paper on top, and you've, I've got my dots and you just outline everything again. The only difference I'd have here is that I've already got my molars and incisors from the last lateral kef. So when it comes to tracing those, I'd put this underneath, line them up, and then I know that I can tr then trace the outline and have the same size tooth as I would um, from my previous lateral cast. So you know that your, the, your tooth shapes aren't going to move. You can also do this with things like your condyle um, or with your um, third molar as well. Um, yes, the patient will be growing, but you shouldn't have like massive changes in, in the shape of your condyle unless you know that there's some sort of pathology going on. So now I have completed my lateral kef tracing for my final superimposition. I forgot to say, try and label everything with numbers, otherwise you can get confused as to which tracing is which. So I'll try to label all my initials as one and then as two. I then have my tracing here. I take my printed final uh, initial kef drawing and I lay it on top. And I'm going to superimpose on Decosta's line because I feel like I like using Decosta's line. I think it's more accurate than SN and it's just a bit easier to draw than built structures. So when I overlie this on top, I then check the patient's growth. Everything should grow in a downwards and forwards direction. So kind of things like nasion should go in that direction, the nose, everything should go there. If you find that then the nose is actually tipped backwards or like the, the face has shrunk upwards, then you know that there's something wrong that you need to go back and retrace. So now I'm going to take my red pen and outline everything. And this is what the final outline should look like. So you have uh, black, which is initial, and red, which is final, and that is your final um, overall superimposition. Just a word note here, I said at the start to use thin 0.38 millimeter pens. I've actually used 0.5, because I didn't have 0.38 on me, and my black ink was running out, um, and I uh, I can't find my red pen, so it's a brown red that I'm using. So that's where you can see the discrepancy between the colors, why the brownie red one looks thicker. So hopefully you shouldn't have that discrepancy. So now we need to come on to your individual maxilla and mandibular superimposition. So I've got my sheet of my individual maxilla and mandible and I've got my tracing, uh, my final tracing on my light board. So I now take my maxilla and I'm going to superimpose it onto so I am superimposing on the maxillary, on the palatal aspect. So that looks roughly right. Before I trace anything now, I have a look at how my teeth have moved. So I know in my patient, he was a class three extraction or fours. Um, he had severe crowding in the upper. So I've utilized a lot of my premolar space in order to be able to correct his, um, to align everything. So my molars, I would expect to come forwards a little bit. Um, so that's, that's um, acceptable in my opinion. If for example, he was like that, and my molar had moved in complete, um, complete premolars width, then I know that that can't be right because I've utilized the space for crowding, not for molar mesialization. So if I move that back to roughly where it was, and then I know that my incisors um, I've pretty much maintained them. I haven't proclined them or retroclined them. I've maintained them, so I shouldn't get as much movement in my maxilla. 
Same with my mandible if I was to show you now. I like to superimpose on the symphysis and on the ID canal. So when I've kind of roughly got that lined up, I then have a look and see at my molar movement. So um, I've used, I did extractions in the lower mainly to correct my uh, incisor inclination. There was some crowding, but not so much in the top. So I have got some molar mesialization and I've also really retroclined and pulled my incisors back. I've also got some extrusion as well. So this looks like it's quite a big difference. So if I think that's a bit too much and it doesn't seem right, it doesn't fit with my clinical presentation, I'd have to go back and redraw the uh, this tracing paper if this doesn't seem right. Um, but no, I'm generally happy with that. So I'm going to outline those in red now. And this is what you should end up with. So you should have your overall superimposition, your maxilla and your mandible, as well as copies of your initial lateral kef and your final lateral kef, which I may have forgot to mention earlier that you can just trace it out as well. So that is it. I hope you found that useful. This is just one way of drawing lateral kefs. You can do it digitally as well. Um, but I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.